previously on Iron City Garage. Yeah, I remember the dip. So right here at the dip, we used to make a left. Cutting all of this out. We're the There's the cab over. There it is. There is the Ford four-door cab over. It ain't terrible. I'd like to have the whole truck. I mean, it's totally worth taking the whole thing. to move big crew cab cab over. So this is the first step of the uh, whole process here. I'm gonna take this whole trailer into the shop and what we're gonna do is <coughs> show you. So I've had so many of these trucks, I have a lot of spare wheels and tires. So we're gonna get these nasty wheels off of here. Get these drums rolling. The absolute first step of doing anything to this truck is make it roll. But we're gonna do that while it's still on the trailer. The trailer fits in the shop, will be in the heat. It's kind of up at a better working height. We gotta chisel all of this dirt out from in between the duels, that kind of thing. Torch off the scrap metal, blah, blah, blah. We're just gonna do it on the trailer in the shop. The trailer needs a little bit of maintenance anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. And we're gonna introduce you to our new mechanic, Clay. Today is his first day and he hit the ground running and has been doing a great job all day so far. So let's get it going.
I think so. Oh, I did move some. Things are pretty seized. <laughs> that was, uh, no, that wasn't the one that was buried. He took a tire off that one, yeah. The yeah, one side, one. that's the side that was buried in the mud, right? Yeah, this side, we just pulled a like, ton of mud out yeah. of it. Yeah, I mean, I guess the whole thing was kind of buried. Right? Yeah. All right, I'll let you go. Yeah, I'll get it all burned up real quick.
Heavy. Yeah. Yep. Heavy, heavy. Uh, here I got you. Uh, we're likely have to move this jack handle probably. Maybe. It might be set from taking them off. Hello. Down a little bit, put some weight on it, or yeah, yeah. Doing my best to go slow. Good there. Should be all right. Can you bring the bobcat over? That's a friend of mine's car. So big first messy day. We got it in the shop. Uh, it was Clay's first day. He did great. This was a uh, real test to see if he was as good with the torches and this heavy metal rust jacked stuff as he said he was. And he is. He definitely didn't lie on his resume. So we got the rear swapped out, which was a battle. But we got rollers on the rear. We're struggling to find rear or rollers for the front. Unfortunately, I don't have piles and piles of rollers for this big stuff like I do for the little pickups. So we're we're probably gonna have to kind of steal some wheels off of the other cab overs we brought back from Nebraska to get this thing to a point that it rolls. Because this is what all of them look like for the most part. And they're two-piece widowmakers. Um, I don't have tires. I don't have tubes. I don't. I mean. There's nothing we can really do. And even if I had the material, the split rings are hard to work with. Like, let me see the camera, I'll show them. So like here, this one is rust jacked open. So it's like kind of out of true. And it's so rusty, we wouldn't ever try and use this. We've done split ring work here before, but they're only safe if everything's pretty rust free and this lip is nice and clean and everything's kind of in round. But this definitely got rust jacked because there should not be a gap here. So definitely not safe. Um, and you can see the mud line where these things were sitting. Um, you saw it in the video of us pulling it out. I mean, even trying to get this split ring off is just super dangerous. So um, we're not going to do that. Uh, 
We're gonna steal wheels off of the other trucks, try and get rollers. Still a ton of work to do on this thing. I bought a set of doors. I have to get the doors here somehow. They're coming out of Wisconsin. The inside of this truck is a big unknown. So this is missing a doghouse, which is the engine cover. I think I have one, but at the same time, I had a guy call me today trying to buy that. So we got to figure out what we're doing for an engine cover. I don't know if I have two of them or not. Glove box doors missing. Steering wheel broke off when we were in Iowa. Front seats are missing. That's not, not too hard to find, but I don't know what we're going to find in the back. It looks like this is a doghouse piece right here. So I might not have to look for a doghouse because it looks like I got partial driver's seat, and I have at least two sides, and then hopefully that's the top back there. Um, but there's all kinds of stuff laying in here. Got the headlight ring, which actually we'll use. We'll bend that straight. So anyways, we have to get through that. we got to get this door up hanging better because it's all out of whack. I want to get this to the, to the point that it's obviously not going to open and close. It's too rotted. All the wood structure's gone out of it. The whole cab is, is kind of lost its rigidity, so we're just going to get this door in here flush square tie it shut so it helps give the cab some structure we're going to torch off all of the non-original pieces of this so when this was military this was original the winch when bell telephone bought it they added their pull setting you know apparatus here so we left the mast out there but i'm going to cut all this off and put this in the scrap pile with the rest of the stuff we loaded today and it just lightens the load for shipping and nobody's going to use this. This is literally scrap metal. I mean, there's nothing here but a little bit of hard work with Bell Telephone. So we're going to get that off of there. Uh, tomorrow we torch the front drums, get those rolling. Like I said, uh, find some rollers for the fronts. And uh, we get towards the end of the week here. We've got Thanksgiving this week, but uh, hopefully we get to the point that we're going to pressure wash and scrub this thing clean. Depending on how cold it is, we might be doing that inside. It's going to be that time of year, so... But that's it. Uh, everything's kind of going as expected. So keep on rolling on this one. I'm excited to see it done with the front doors on. I think it's going to look really cool with the doors. Unfortunately, the front doors are kind of rust and white, but I think we might try and, I don't know. Who knows what color this thing's going to be after we get it a scrub. It's got like 40 years of uh, mold and moss growing on it from being in the woods. So that's it. We identified the gear. It's a 41. I found out, even me being a cab over guy, I did not know that 41 was the only year you're going to have chrome trim on the grill. So it's definitely a 41, which is pretty cool. So stay tuned. I'll show you what's happening with this thing over the next couple weeks. that we did that was we got some, when I was out in Iowa as soon as I pulled on the steering wheel the steering wheel broke off uh, so we cut the outer part of the column to expose the shaft so that we can get like vice grips channel locked maybe we clean up the splines on that and get our steering wheel on it but that sheath on there all the way they were both flush and there's nothing we can do so if we get it steering now we can actually steer it whether we tack weld a steering wheel on it or whatever that column's all froze up nasty anyways whoever builds this truck isn't going to use it this purely makes it easy to ship and makes it easier for other people to deal with this thing moving around Yeah, that's fine. 
I don't want to do this in here. Wow. Okay. I'm thinking all that play in there is it's kind of like on a bind too at the same time. You try taking that off. There might be rust and stuff in there that's gonna fall. Okay. Do you think this shaft here is moving? Does it move at all? No. And there's all this stuff around there that's all built up too. I was kind of nicking at, nipping at it with a pry bar and hammer. I don't know what that. I've never seen a fitment on like that. Wiggle the wiggle the wheel or the brake drum. Let me see what's moving. Okay. Nothing. No, no, it's solid. Well, since that right here, maybe I could get, I have one, that torque well, set, maybe I could pound one of those in and... Well, that should be the adjustment, see? Well, what that adjustment does is the pinion has teeth in it, just like my fingers. Yeah, like And it goes on gear. a worm gear. Well, it moves that pinion over to make it tighter, this set screw here. That's not part of the shaft. It's just a, okay. a set screw and a lock nut. That's what's usually on the top there. And that's what takes the play out of your steering, is it makes it tighter on that uh, arm gear. Good, good. So now that's ready to be plucked. Outside, once we get a bumper bolt in it, once yes. we get a bumper bolt in it, and let's go as a better plan. But we want to try and suck this in a little bit if we can. I don't know if we just try running it over with the skid loader, if we take it off and we get it on some blocks and push down on it in the middle, maybe. Or I was thinking if we get a bolt in it, maybe we could like come along to that engine cross member or something, pull on it or the front axle. Or yeah, it ain't a huge deal, but if we could get it just in a little, like a couple yeah. inches. The other thing, we're getting ready to lease the leaf springs as an entirety. So if there's a loose leaf spring, pull it out. But I was picking up leaf springs off the deck of the trailer the whole way home, and it looks like that pack is almost completely gone on that yeah. other side. Yeah, same thing with this side over here. Yeah. Yeah, it's all behind the wheels. All yep. on. Yeah, so there's not much to do there, but just any loose pieces pulling out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we could probably clamp that down. That would be good, yeah. You know, with a like a U-clamp? Yeah. I don't know what this nut is. Would that be like an override nut, a steering joke? No. 
I don't know. I've never seen anything like that. It looks like a big nut. But yeah. Yeah, that stuff, that thing was completely covered whenever I started that. Like, <laughs> well, there's some kind of fault. Yeah, it's like a real yeah, nasty hard, mud or something. It's full of stones. Yeah. Couple of them were kind of hard. Kind of working back and forth a little bit. Yeah. Okay. That damn thing so Oh yeah. Where's all the water? Is that water coming yeah, out? Yeah, that's water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're working inside now, right? Exactly. So I'm just trying to get that stuff off of it. It's that back corner. I can get a little bit more of that stuff off if you're all right. But you didn't get the cap off? No, yeah, I'm trying to get that um, last bolt real quick. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a bunch of that uh, goopy stuff or whatever that may be. That Oh, yeah, there's some real nasty stuff in there, Joe. They had buds down bottom, so. You got movement. Now I gotta get that thing back on there, huh? I'll get it freed up first. It's knocking that stuff out. Yeah. That's nasty. Yeah, dude, that's crazy. I know your dad seems to think different, but every time he fucking one of the Yeah, with this, it's yeah. hard to take it off with this. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. Good. 
That way, it'll be kind of work. Now there's a hell of a bend in this wheel too, right here. Maybe I could. <laughs> It's so long. <laughs> hey, that's not bad. Dude, as long as it's, I mean, it's doing 10 times better than what it did. Oh my God. That, that wheel hasn't turned in 50 years. Yeah.
and everything is just all like falling apart. The only thing, like I know that's where the hinges will work, but if we were just tack it like a couple small, yeah, tiny tacks, you know that would keep that door from swinging. So the reason why I tack this is for shipping, and if you look, none of it's touching the inside part of the frame on both, so you could just take a little cutting wheel and nip that off and clean it right back up so you still got a good door skin. Like this, but there we go. So, let me just give one solid kick. Yeah, let's go. Sorry, I don't want to kick it on your gun either. I don't want to hurt that thing. Alright.
these plugs down here were all seized up. I had to heat them up with a torch and <clears throat> work them back and forth so they all came out and I could drain all the water out and put a little bit of fresh fluid in there so it's lube. I had to do the same thing with the transmission underneath and I put some new fluid in there to keep it lubed up. All right, big cab over's going out because we're waiting on front doors for that one. So I'm not going to give it a bath or anything because it's kind of no point. I might want to match those doors up. So as we're waiting on the doors to get delivered, we're going to bring a fresh one in.
Yep. Then that way, you know, it looks to be very fucking close. This one should actually shut because of how I did it. Yeah. I should shut. And then, um, I think what we'll do is, is it's not as shit really works. I think we're gonna put a ratchet strap somehow, some way, and connect them. And I'll just have to duke some hazard up. Okay. That's really close. I'm thinking about taking this off. This is all out of whack. That's yeah. why I just had to do it to bring this back in because the whole body is separated from it. So, I'll just take it off all together. Honestly, because it'll shut by itself then. This door will there's somewhere you can put that. Dude, it really is. That's all I'm saying. Jeez. Oh yeah. There it is. It shuts and opens. Flush. Yeah. Look at that. You can actually open this one. Yeah, it already collapsed there. But it might stick.
everybody. We are all done with the 41 Ford crew cab. So this is as good as we can get it. Got a set of doors on it, got it rolling, got it steering, got it titled, got it cleaned up, got the scrap cut off of it. Yes, it was scrap. This is how the truck was. Maybe it might have had a platform on it or something to cover these frame for it, frame rail. But when it was in the military, that was how it is. Crew cab, big window, so the operator could see what he was doing with his winch cable. Um, might have had some kind of platform. I haven't been able to find any of these on the internet, like 100% dead stock, to see what they put here. Maybe some kind of supplies. What we're being told by the historians that are getting a hold of us is that these trucks were used to pull tanks out of the mud. And it seems like by how many of these have come out of the woodwork since this video and a few others that it seems like Bell Telephone was buying these things out of some kind of surplus sale or something after the war. Um, since we put up the first part of this video, um, we've had a couple people reach out with other crew cabs and they're all Bell Telephone. Um, and they're all winch trucks that were turned into trucks to raise telephone poles and pull wire. So that's what history we have so far. Um, this truck here, real soft, uh, real rusty. Unfortunately, you know, we got to this one a little late. Um, but it is a crew cab cab over. There's a lot of parts available for these. Uh, this is a good template for somebody to start with for sure. Or it's just a cool relic to put into your collection. Um, 41, it's a one year only grill. This grill is amazing. It hardly has any damage to it at all. A little bit of rust here, but all the trim pieces on it. Um, I've never had a 41 grill ever. I've never seen one with all of the grill bars, so that's pretty neat. Good title on it. I'm not going to price this thing on the internet because I have a lot of buyers for this truck already. This is one of those if you know you know things, if you know the people and you know what they do with them. So we're not going to price it. If you're interested in it, 412-335-6100 or Iron City Garage at Gmail. Something you think you have to have, you can give me a shout. I'll tell you about it, send you the photos, give you some pricing. Um, stay tuned. We have more crew cab cab overs coming again some calls and emails have come in so we're going to go rescue a couple more if you have one i'm very interested in talking to you any price range any condition something like this to something way nicer if you have three door four door cab overs any kind of awkward weird cab over i want to see it um, we're actually talking to somebody today about a 54 ford six by six six wheel drive really really cool truck um, I love these weird cab overs, so please, if you know of any of these sitting anywhere, anything for sale, maybe you have one, give me a shout at that phone number. Um, phone number will be here in the caption as well. Um, and again, if you have anything else like this, any uh, old trucks, old Mustangs, cab overs, stuff like that, never hurts to shoot me a text. I kind of give you an instant yes or no or make you an offer in a text message. So. Hope you enjoyed our video. Stay tuned for the next one. We got a ton of awesome videos coming out here. Me and Shannon is trying to get caught up right now. And um, we're actually going to look at a Shelby in a barn today. So stay tuned for that video. Make sure you're subscribed. And we'll see you on the next one. Hey, thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have cars like these in your garage, if you have a fastback Mustang or convertible Impala, a nice original paint pickup truck or an old cab over truck, and you want to sell it, I'd love to try and put a deal together with you. You can get a hold of me at 412-335-6100. We pay excellent prices. We pay finder's fees. You know, it's no secret. We do make a little money on a YouTube video, so that allows me to pay, you know, sometimes market value or really good prices for these cars. We'd love to come out and drag it out of your barn. We'd love to film it. We'd love for you to be a part of that whole process. So if you have an original paint or an original old fastback mustang that needs work like these ones i have on my trailer or if you have an old pickup or again a convertible impala cab over truck whether it doesn't matter where you are we buy nationwide here in the united states all the way as far as california i've had stuff new mexico arizona oregon washington high desert stuff we love so or if you're in the east coast and it's a rusty mustang or a rusty convertible impala that is fine we typically don't buy many trucks on the east coast but i buy a lot of cars on the east coast if you've cab over parts also especially for these early fords i'd be interested in that it never hurts to send me an email or a text ironcitygarage at gmail.com you're welcome to send me an email or a text message probably the best you kind of get an instant answer that way 412-335-6100 i'd love to talk to you hope you enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully we can make a deal on what you guys have on your farms or in your garages